Alrighty, g'day everyone and welcome to the Azeroth's resting place. I almost said Wrecker's Yard out of instincts, but when have I last seen Blight on Wrecker's Yard? We have V1 for Team Elysium on the Blight, rocking a very mighty fine fit, might I add. But kicking off the start of the trial here, ARP, obviously very big map, very lovely hourglass figure. There's a big choke point you got to make it through, but V1 is going to be looking in those spawn areas, trying to spot out where our survivors have started off. And we're already getting some scratch marks, but a pallet stun to kick things off. And that is a beautiful stun from Bulbazava, who was taking the first chase, but we see eyes on our Jonathan Byers, who gets another pallet stun. This is exactly what we were talking about in the campfire chat. You want to be aware that the Blight can be on you in just a couple of seconds. And this team is really making sure that there are no injuries being handed out early on. Three pallets have been dropped, but no injury just yet. We do see the survivors crossing the choke point. You talked about it. ARP can be a really, really tricky map with a three gen on the top or bottom side when the killer is able to hold it. So you're going to make sure that your survivors are not hooked in the wrong location now let's see nightlight what he's able to do in this first let's say official chase with an injury here there's going to be the firecracker but it's not going to help out not reaching the pallet either so we do not need to be worried about the potential p slap here so first hook stage is coming out now we have seen one survivor in the distance lurking a little bit trying to find the best position for a potential rescue here but the generator progress shouldn't be too high for now Mm, and I just I was just looking at the killer's build just earlier there. A bit of murmur coming out from mm -hmm. V1. A very, very interesting choice. It's not very common that I see aura reading perks on the blight, but sometimes you see stuff like barbecue and chili. But bit of murmur is a new one to me, and I'm really excited to see how that comes into play. But Dan is over here stealthy out for the safe. It does get spotted out, but it has the sprint burst in the back pocket. It does manage to get around the tree here a bit. Goes for a flare dodge, but not quite. It's just going to go for the one by one to get the deliverance active. And when you see sprint burst, you normally see <laughs> deliverance very commonly. Now, Nightlight just needs to make it to a filler, but Dan is straight up going to be taking the down. Is V1 going to be able to get the down before deliverance activates? It looks like it. That is really rough for the team now. Nightlight being back oh. immediately and there is no deliverance for Team Eternal. Now that is really, really rough to take here. Nightlight going to be on the second hook stage, 60 seconds away from the elimination. And we have still three objectives to go through. We have Dan hooked, so Babo needs to potentially rotate over. I think that is the survivor we saw last. And there's going to be the location of that. Nightlight, however, is going to be back on the feet here because we have the next survivor rotating in. Great chaos, we could say. Started here by Eternal. We won is going to have a really hard time sorting all of this together. So the survivors might get away with that. That's going to be a nice block by Dan here, making sure that Nightlight has a lot more distance to run. But uh, apart from this pallet here, it's going to be a really, really difficult challenge. Nightlight not going to take anything too risky. He drops the pallet immediately, but we won instantly back on his track. And Spoker, I do think Eternal has to continue with three survivors. Yeah, that's exactly right. A very early elimination for V1 and Eternal just fighting tooth and nail to keep Nightlight in the game. There were a couple of filler pallets to utilize in the area here, but Nightlight was going for a pretty greedy playstyle, especially with the very first chase as well. But I think that, that that greediness is really coming back to bite him as we are now in the 3v1 situation with two people injured as well as the pop goes the weasel to keep the objective in check. So I'm really starting to stress for Eternal, but with the pressure that they had early on, I'm sure they'll keep it up. Absolutely, and I think it's worth mentioning that I have no idea how two generators pop, to be honest. We had a very quick chase on Nightlight, regardless of the three drop talents in the oh. early game, and Dan is a little bit too confident on the healing, I believe. I think he was... Honestly, believing that he would wait, make that. He looked so confident, but unfortunately he does not. And then we had all this chaos on the fun bus and still two generators have been completed. So I would say even a good move by Eternal here, but now things seem to fall a little bit apart under pressure here. Then not getting the healing off. We do have the next one here with our beloved survivor on the edge map. And a 
actually it works out <laughs> we won over speeding a little bit here and then not being able to land that hit and these seconds right now are so important because potentially that is exactly the time Bozavre needs to go for that heal oh. wow wow yep <laughs> <laughs> like, that's all that needs to be said. Wow! The Magic almost being able to dodge that out, but came out of the locker a little bit too early in anticipation of a fatigue, maybe. But fresh hook onto the Magic, and it's going to be the process all over again of getting someone else out of the game. Whether it be splitting up the stages, or Dan actually getting caught out here once again. And gonna get hit before getting into the locker. Looking at the medkit charge though, I think his heal was as close as it possibly could have been yeah. in that last chase. But Papa's hub is getting found as well. Committing to the gen to make it a 4k2 instead of 4k3. Absolutely great decision here also because with everyone who's new to DBD League, keep in mind we changed our scoring system a little bit going off the win conditions. Now generators first, so every single generator that is going to be completed here is rising the win condition for the other team a little bit more into the higher difficulty. We do see a little bit of back and forth and it's not going to be the down on to Bubble Maybe he can make something magically happen, disappear mid-chase but it's unfortunately not going to happen so for we won it's now going to be playing the slugfest here three generators completed spoke you pointed it out great move towards the end so we're talking about four generators as a win condition for elysium survivor team in the upcoming trial that means you could ignore a three gen technically when you need four generators but arp with the three gens guaranteed on top or bottom side, then one of the mid generators very, very often being close to them. So kind of a four gen area, definitely a doable job for Eternal Skiller. Mm, now, it ain't over just yet. We still have Deliverance available on Den. We already saw the Unbreakable being used earlier, so we still have some second chance to go with here. And I think obviously Den's just gonna be waiting for that pickup to happen onto Bubba Zava before popping the Delhi and then maybe making some sort of hatch play, but I think with the, the scoring, it's all about the generators and not so much the escape points. So, uh, yeah, I think it's just four gens being the required win con for Elysium's survivors to take the first set point. Yeah, unfortunately, the hatch will only come in clutch if the other team also repairs three generators, and then with the mm. hatch escape, you could b technically break the tie. So I agree with you. The hatch escape would definitely be a lot less worth here compared to the old scoring system we had then still waiting trying to do it last second now we one is slightly starting to expect that going to take a good position here where he can take it then using it in the night he's actually not going to even go for it so Bobozava just going to be the last survivor to be picked up here that seals the deal ladies and gentlemen 4k on two generators remaining win condition four completed generators for the team Elysium on their survivor game Tja, ARP, if there is one map spoker that can help Eternal Skiller here to make that happen and go for a tie and a replay, because I think that would even already be an amazing performance, then I feel like ARP is potentially the perfect map to somehow achieve that. Oh, most definitely. I would wholeheartedly have to agree with you there. And I feel like there's always going to be some variables that could make that tricky and sort of prevents that tie from happening when it comes to hatch escapes bleed outs that sort of thing but that's enough said for the first game here we're gonna get the next one set up for you with eternal on the killer side to try and play for that win con right after a quick break Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and we are going to kick this off with the housekeeping. You didn't see it because we were not streaming the joining of the last match, we could say. But Eternal forgot to set the map. We ended up on the Pale Rose, and that means a Tier 1 balanced penalty is applied, which means half of a hook stage Whoa. is deducted. And that has quite severe impact spoker because it was four mm. generators being needed before now it's going to be three generators because if we then move on to the 12 stages uh both killers got it's going to be 
Eternal staying on 11 and a half. So three generators to do for Team Elysium. However, Pedro doing quite a good job on Zaka here. That's quite an opening chase, right? The killer of Eternal Ooh. against the former team member. <laughs> and if you're hearing that in the distance, folks, that is a face the darkness coming into play. So we're going to miss at the shack window, but this will inevitably be the down onto Zaka. Oh, the swing in the window! Uh oh, he's in the montage now, but very, very unlucky. Very interesting build coming up from Petro, though. I'm very confused, is the word I want to use here. Face the darkness and cholerophobia being some very off meta choices here, but very curious to see how they come into play. Absolutely spoken. The bad part about this perk build is that Elysium loaded in and knew about this. The surprise effect completely gone because, ladies and gentlemen, when there is a penalty and the teams are loading back in, the rule offending side is not allowed to switch anything. So, face the darkness and, and colorphobia, absolutely not an off meta surprise here. Team could prepare a little bit. They had two minutes between the uh, original trial and the restart to discuss a little bit, and that's a beautiful stun right here. Zaka after the save already healed. Yeah. We do see another swing on to V1 who's playing this edge map pallet here. Really, really wonderful. We do have the charges back, but oh no, actually no pallet right here. So that should be an injury just before leaving the hill there's nothing balanced landing can do here but we might make it back in time towards safety also have to stop one of these generators because once again keep in mind three generators would now be enough with the penalty so pedro better keeps an eye on all objectives because any generator that would be completed is already horrendous well hey at least the good news is pedro remembered to bring pop goes the weasel to the to the winner's final blight match so we'll at least be able to to keep some some oppression on the generators, but not being quite able to follow up with another down just yet, as Zaka has been unhooked and healed in the distance, getting a little bit caught at the tile here, though. Granout mucking around with the collision a bit as the first generator has been completed in the distance. This will be another hook for Pedro. More towards the bottom side, though. We know there was a lot of progress on the top side, gens, and. Pedro's going to be rushing around to try and find where to put this pop, but we hear a gen here already with so much progress as the second one on the top side also gets completed. And this is now a lot of pressure, just one more generator, and then we would be at the win condition 14. Millisium here! Zaka this time not getting away with his cheeky moves. This is going to be the injury right before the locker, but luckily he does have this little pallet here over there. We do go edge map. Anderson with an unfortunately short performance here, but there's the third generator in the distance, and ladies and gentlemen, even if we have a 4k right now, there's the half of Oak Stage penalty for Eternal for setting uh, the pale rose as the map, so unfortunately that is going to be set. What? Oh. Unfortunately for the Eternal fans, that is going to be set number one awarded to Elysium. And Spoker, we talked about it. Elysium trying to set a mark here against Eternal. Elysium not dropping a single set yet. Elysium mm. trying to prepare for a great grand final. And right now, I see all of that. Mm, no, I'm, I'm cackling to myself a little bit purely just because of how goofy it is hearing everyone screaming every 25 <laughs> yeah, seconds. Yeah. As we've had Face the Darkness active on V1, I think, for the past couple of minutes of the trial already. So uh, hey, at least Petro's getting some info, right? But obviously not going for the totem, just straight out pumping out the objective and securing that first set point. Really, really well played to kick things off by Team Elysium. Now, I know the collision on those cars around the main building are so miserable to put up with, and V1, I'm sure, is well aware of this as well and abusing it as much as possible. Pedro not quite going to be able to make that one. Chase is going to go back over towards the main building as we have Zeno, Zaka, and Grenau grinding out the objective in the distance, trying to put up with all the screams. The symphony of horror. Symphony of horror. Ladies and gentlemen, look at our Spokerman being in this spooky <laughs> mood in the All Hallows League. We won going down here. And that's a f oh, is it? No, it's not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
I was uh, having a short shock for a moment, unfortunately, yeah. not going to work, but also the hit for the video compilation is also not going to come through, but it's going to look like a quick save and also the final generator now spoker. We're talking about four stages so far. That's now going to be hook stage number five. Elysium is not only taking set number one, Elysium is dominating right now. Mm, and in true Xeno fashion, we'd see a bit of trolling stunned again here by V1 and the Delhi coming out from Xeno who previously went to go for that little window tech at that double window tile. You always love to see a little bit of bands to, to keep the mood up and happy. But we should be able to see a very clean four-man escape from our survivor side here. Oh, are we going to get a hit tank from Grenout? Oh, he's, he's blocking, he's blocking, he's dodging and weaving. This <laughs> is not working out the exact way they are planning it, but they are kind of getting away. There's now going to be the hit on the Zaka palette available here as well. Now they may need to make it all the way around. Ah, they could actually go for that. We do see a little bit of the flashlight. This time it's definitely going to be the blind, unfortunately, without the rescue. And now is it going to be successful? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> Down is going to come out. But even if Xeno stays in this trial, and even though they are leaving with three survivors, a three man escape against Flight on ARP is just a fantastic outcome to achieve. There's just nothing else to say. Yeah, well, as you put it, really, nothing else needs to be said. But I can understand the pressure would have been absolutely immense for Pedro knowing how difficult the win condition would have been after the point penalty purely to something of your own mistake sort of thing you know it's always difficult to have to remember to set the map each time but it, it happens it happens but first set point to elysium with a very very exciting second set coming up before things start get a little bit funky with the sets but death singer on the dead dog saloon will be coming up after a short break All right, welcome back, everyone, where we're going to be seeing, as one of my good friends would say, old mate Kayla with a limp in his stride, cruising around the map on the Dead Dog Saloon. Pedro is going to be playing Deathslinger for Eternal at the start of the second set here, and already taking a very quick chase onto Zeno to start things off. Shot and a miss, though, but that was a little tribute to your boy Q, a good friend of ours. Q being honored here as well. And I just love this finger on the Dead Dog Saloon. It has such a vibe. It has such a home map for him. And with the cigar, the recent add-on meta that came through in DVD Comp, I yeah. remember we had these chains, the prison chains coming in. And what a wonderful shot to kick this off here. Pedro looking very different compared to the Blight set in the previous one. A lot more confidence coming out right here and putting Zeno in a very difficult spot from the early get-go, trying to get the second shot here, the Firecracker not going to help a lot and can he shoot over this little carriage that's going to be the quest Jack, oh. nice dodge by Zeno perfect timing on that one going over towards the windmill here so good first chase as a counter by Elysium survivor here but now forced to go towards the edge map and just going down I wonder how many generators we will see completed there's definitely one could be a second one knowing Elysium but so far both sides with some good showings here. Yeah, exactly right. Now, I definitely wouldn't be surprised seeing the second gen um, but I feel like that first gen definitely would have been doubled out by survivors, as it was kind of near where you would normally expect to see a lot of people spawning. But we see main building with a high amount of progress as well. Kex has been busy up there, unless that was V1. No, we've got V1 actually stealthing towards the corner of the map here, but Pedro is rapidly approaching his location and is probably going to catch him out here and preemptively dropping the pallet with Sprint Burst as the exhaustion kind of surprises me a little bit, I'm not going to lie, but the unhook is going to happen onto Zeno in the distance for it though, and V1 is just going to be playing around this pallet, around the edge here, and a beautiful dodge coming out from V1. Pedro not quite being able to land that one, he's going to elect to just break the pallet and try and stop him from escaping this little area of the map. 
And there is going to be we won in this difficult spot on the edge of the Deadlock Saloon. Still making quite a good mm. run, but it ends right here on the staircase. Quick scope by Pedro. That's going to be the second hook stage in exchange, though, for already two generators. So Eternal not going to slow down on these objectives, setting the pressure early on. We won also a fresh hook here. Good for Pedro, getting that third win condition a little bit higher by the fresh hook. But it also means that no one is finding himself in the situation of a tunnel out yet. I'm not entirely sure if Pedro realizes that it's unlikely for Elysium to uh, drop anyone before the final generator is being completed and therefore just going for the fresh hooks early on. But Elysium definitely in a good spot here with the two minutes of hang time that are going to be awarded. We do see just in time with the perfect coordination, Zeno going to take the unhook, not ending up in a trade. It's going to be the broken chain with the cigar. Absolute understandable decision. We do see the short stun duration right here, Zeno also with enough of distance, I believe, to make it over towards the shack here. So Elysium Survivor not really in danger. Eternal's killer trying to get a little bit hand on the Dead Dog Saloon, but Spoker so far doesn't really <laughs> work out yet. <laughs> I'm just going to say that. Look, that was a beautiful shot on Tazaka. It's actually followed up by a very quick down from that cigar value but it's it's so interesting to see how the slinger meta has changed over the years obviously as you were saying earlier with the prison chains being the commonly picked add-on for for all your juicer death slinger players but now as the meta's shifted back over to the cigar and just the, the zoning capability of using it as well as the base kit changes to slinger as well his kit has been upgraded a bit where reload times are a little quicker than usual so it's a very nice quality of life change but it's nice to see the cigar being the new staple in single builds here this is a really awkward palette to get caught at for v1 Oh, and almost punished right after with the shot right there. Unfortunate for Pedro for not hitting that one. Zaka and we won the injured survivors here. So we are playing on a half-half setup on the team. Never mind, three healthy survivors. And that's also what I like about Elysium here. They are in a good spot after the blight set, but they are not becoming too overconfident here on this one. They're not trying to push the generators with violence and just with a hat through the wall. They're keeping a cool hat here. They're taking the resets when necessary. Zeno seems like he overlooked the killer there for a second. Is going to be in a quite difficult position now because the shot is definitely possible. Pedro anticipated that he would go around the corner, but Zeno staying behind the box there. Good reading back on the mind game. Now we do, however, though cannot benefit just from injury so it's very understandable that we are going to follow up on Zeno trying mm. to go for that and once again the very nice dodge here forcing the hit into the pallet edge map anderson kind of on the dead oh. saloon dodges a second time and now pedro even though we just said understandable that he's trying to down that survivor here that is taking way too long smoker <laughs> Oh, it sounds like you're yelling at me, though. I feel like I'm doing the right thing. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll try to, I'll down him now. But, um, yeah, no, Zeno, it's... Everyone should know that Zeno is a very, very confident player with what he does. Pedro, obviously, trying to be very, very greedy and overextending for these shots to try and make the down happen a bit quicker than normal. But it's always really nice to see Zeno in his element and sort of understanding the mechanics so very well, knowing when to crouch at power pallets like after dropping pallets and dodging shots popping Loki here obviously to force the grab as the last gen gets done and Zaka will get adrenaline to make the rest of the team healthy and nowhere is going to be coming into play but it's really really unlucky for Pedro that he committed to that chase onto Zeno and I honestly wonder if no one escapes death even has the time to come and clutch here because we've seen that the survivors already at the door it's already open there's no effect coming in from that perk we do have we won leaving the trial there, Zaka and I believe Kexo just showed up in the exit gate as well. So all of them leaving, no one escapes death here completely wow. without any effect because the survivor team is too fast and too efficient. And that's going to leave us with just a couple of stages here for Pedro. Now Eternal in a difficult spot. We have five hook stages on three individual survivors, three individual survivors is kind of great but five hook stages definitely not 
I believe, what Eternal was planning to do here, especially not after losing set number one and being kind of under pressure to putting something back onto Elysium and forcing them into a difficult spot here. So what you want to try after losing set number one is making Elysium a little bit sweat and they need to be scared that the second set point could drop into the hands of Eternal. And five hook stages doesn't really manage to do that. So I think the upcoming trial number four is going to feel like a very, very good one for Elysium. We are going to find out who's going to play the killer for them. We're also going to find out who's taking set point number two, ladies and gentlemen, just after a short break. It's yours, it's yours. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, I'm lagging. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm <laughs> lagging and I'm introducing you from the mountain town to this trial. Uh, a little bit of chaos over there. It should be stable now. I hope Spoker can hear me. So we see the first shot just happened for me. Everything just got played for me in one second, the entire minute that was uh, played there. So we are back now and we are sorted. A little bit of chaos going on behind the scenes sometimes as well. We do see a sprint burst enjoyable with Zafra not even opting to keep it immediately going for the first generator they want to attack that because i do think we can agree spoker eternal is under a lot of pressure here mm, definitely with the five stage that we saw in the last game with three fresh hooks as well definitely i would feel a bit below average than what you would normally expect to see a slinger get on his home turf, but Zeno on the killer side now it lands the shot onto Bubazava and it's gonna get the cigar value as well to try and keep him in this area of the map, but it's gonna be able to utilize the, the carriage pallet just next to the shack, excuse me. But oh, actually gonna be able to get over the vault there as well. The ruin getting cleansed in the background as well, which I was just about to talk about, but the survivors so rudely cleansed it before I could say something. And that's going to be the first down of the trial. Very, very unfortunate first down because from Eternal's POV, you were hoping that the first survivor is lasting a little bit longer here and that at least the generator is going to be popped. If we compare the two trials back to back, we had one completed generator for the first down and another half of the generator being done. So basically Eternal here, 30 seconds behind Elysium. Now, let's hope that they are able to keep up in the mid-game. Zeno, though, finding a very, very valuable generator over here has 60% of progress. That's going to be a little bit of punishing when that is ticking down. However, he must make the difficult yeah. decision now if he wants to guard that generator all the way and giving eternal access to the other generators or if he's going to go a little bit aggressive after these survivors. We saw one shot uh, onto eternal survivor didn't hit, so we have three healthy survivors lurking on the dead dog Serunia. that's the big advantage and it seems like Zeno is opting to go for a different strategy than Eternal's kill in the previous trial. We will actually see a camping into second stage and knowing Eternal's efficiency and punishing um, any playstyle like that, I can only hope that Zeno has calculated this really well. Yeah, well, I think from what we saw already spectating through the other survivors, we already see the pressure being split across the objective in multiple places. I would not be surprised to see one generator remaining when Bubazava does get eliminated, but it looks like that Dan might actually be going into position for the save, and we might only be at two generators remaining instead of just one, unless we can have someone rotating over to Dan's gen before this uh, oh sorry just after this unhook happens and no dan's just getting back on the gen and i think they're accepting the elimination onto bubazava in favor of getting these generators out and in true eternal fashion those gens are flying yeah that is a very very good answer from eternal and look at that 80 percent on this generator here as well we need five hook stages and five hook stages with only a second survivor wouldn't even be enough so we would need another survivor and this survivor needs to be fully eliminated in order to take the win on the second set here now we do see that no one escapes death but we have seen in the previous trial no one escapes death is not a guarantee for anything if the survivors are bumping out the final generator immediately going 
coming on the exit gates, then with the mobility speed of this Death Slinger, it can be really, really punishing. And this generator is so close to completion as well. So Xeno really running on eggshells here while Eternal Survivor Team is moving closer and closer towards that final objective. They are pulling back. Very, very great though. You can see the communication between them immediately when the Death Slinger is turning around. The other survivor has already left the generator by minimum 20 meter uh, start. So that is a really, really good coordination here on the side of Eternal. Seems like they're slowly finding back a little bit away from the chaos we've seen in the previous trial. A little bit back to the sword. Yeah. Gameplay we're used to that. That was a very, very nice and to, um, and Anticipate <laughs> the word is too difficult right now. <laughs> so very nice guessing here from our killer and Dan is going behind these cactus and trying to prolong the chase for as long as possible, but Zeno is not going to fall for that mind game on the pallet, and that's going to be a quick down into hook stage number four. There's generator number one spoker. Will it be the end game? I think it's very likely that it's going to be wow. hitting the end game and just like that. Final generator getting completed. Lovely to see that we're going to be getting some very powerful value from Pain Resonance, a stack getting depleted there and regressing the most progressed generator, which is none of them. All gens are done. And Noed will hopefully be coming into play. The totem is very close by to the hook, so I don't imagine this rescue being obtainable. But the awkward part about it is that that rescue does need to happen if Eternal wants to take the set point as leaving Dan to die on the hook here would be the six stages that Xeno needs to secure for Elysium. Oh, oh, oh. That's a beautiful shot onto the magic across the ways, but he's going to continue to stay by his objective and earn that set point. My goodness, what a shot that was. That was absolutely amazing. And this has so much impact because we were talking about it. It's okay to just kill the second survivor. Then you have the six stages that matter for the second win condition. And we still have the no one escapes death. And even if that is cleansed, Le Magic cannot really tank any hit here. He cannot work as a distraction. He cannot work as a bait because he is already injured. So getting that shot might not have resulted in a down for Zeno, but it still has a a lot of impact in these final seconds of this trial here we do see nightlight stealthing around but they still have to cleanse that no one escapes death and that is really really close and located in a really well position there next to doc being on the hook here so they do take the understandable decision going for that exit gate taking as many stages as possible out of the door here but that is still not going to be enough. It will be on six stages. Previous trial was five stages. So Elysium would take the second set point here. And then our biggest dream has come true, Spoker. Evan <laughs> is going to be the deciding set. <laughs> oh, well, as I was saying earlier, I think the only way Elysium's going to win this one is if they have a naughty bear that's ready to be up for the task mm -hmm. of of getting the highest result possible to secure a 3-0 victory over Eternal, which as much as we've been hyping it up, as much as many people still think Eternal will be the ones to take the victory here with $900 on the line for the first place and winning this matchup, guaranteeing you in the grand finals with at least $100 guaranteed. This is an important matchup that either Elysium or Eternal would want to take here. And with the way Elysium is playing right now, they look like they're going to be in the money. But we'll have to wait and see as we load in to the Raccoon Police Department for our third set. We will see you all very soon. All right, welcome back in to everyone who didn't go into Task Manager and close their game after seeing that it's RPD Zaka on the trapper for team elysium starting off with some very very optimal traps to get into place and i i always forget that they added it as a base kit feature that trapper now gets a little bit of movement mm -hmm. speed after placing a trap it's very nice to see and would you look at this that's a cheeky little rune totem in a very not so inconvenient spot 
Yeah, that is a very, very nice base kit addition here. I, I mean, imagine the very old Evan who would need to go across the entire RPD and just collect the traps and the gens are already done before we would start seeing the gameplay here. So Evan getting a little bit of love by the devs really, really deserved. And now we are on for, or we are in for a very, very nice set between Elysium and Eternal. Welcome in, everyone. If you just joined, we have the winner bracket final, and Elysium has two set points already. So if they win this Evan set, they could be in the grand final next Sunday. Let's see how Zaka, the killer of Elysium, is going to play this first chase here. We do see Ubersavre and Zaka, former team members, going into intense mind games here and Ubersavre absolutely oh. showing off wonderful looping and juking here, cutting a lot of time from Zaka here. So this is a dream start for Eternal. Yeah, wow, <laughs> beautiful green coming up from Bobo as well. And again, he's Kiki he can't keep wow. getting away with this. And he gets away with it with the pallet <laughs> stun. Bobo's on a really awkward side of the map where Zarka has been doing a lot of preparation. And we're already going to be seeing some gens flying from this, but. It's just playing it so well. It's not even losing track there a bit. It's going to allow Bobber to make it back to this pallet and just keep going around and around Zaka, eventually breaking the pallet here. But yes, we have a lot of traps set up on this side of the map, but, but bobo has been very well aware of that and just keeping the chase at where he knows is safe. So really, really well played to start off the trial. And yeah, I don't think there's much more to add to that. Oh, and he was back <laughs> in his own trap. That is unfortunate for Zaka here, but we do see that he recovers quite quickly, trying to catch the survivor, but they actually made a lot of distance. Nightlight just dropping this pallet, forcing Zaka to break it and just wasting his time. We do see a second generator being completed. Dan now going to be the next survivor in chase. Did he spot that trap? On that pallet, I believe he did because he's just going to continue mm. moving forward into the main room area here, holding W away. Wouldn't be surprised knowing Eternal if we do see a buddy moving in very, very soon here, taking a hit as we have three healthy survivors. And there we already see it. Dan has this pallet, has this strong window and a buddy to work with as well. So Eternal setting themselves up here for a really, really strong showing. and. If uh, Zaka doesn't play this correctly, he could potentially use a lot, uh, lose a lot of time here. Yeah, and as, as scary as it could be, sorry, not quite finding the words, but knowing that there are some really powerful trap spots on RPD at the end of the day, Trapper is as as fundamental in M1 mind games and I think a little bit of network issues. Got a little bit scared. My internet might have died. But Zaka is going to win the mind game here and get the down on to Dan. The first hook of the trial should be coming out momentarily and hopefully some pain res value to help fight back at the sheer amount of pressure that Eternal has been putting on the objective. Yeah, that's the crazy thing, right? You mentioned it, and it's good to point it out. After all, Evan is just the absolute basic M1 Andy that has to work with what he's given, though he does get the down onto Petro here, so we do at least have a second down now coming in, second hook stage on a second survivor. So we are not only going after one survivor here, plus rep for Zaka making... Uh, plus rep for our killer Zaka, making sure that we are not going to find ourselves in a tunnel situation, but that is two stages so far. Now it's going to be interesting. Will Zaka just stay with this survivor over here? That would be hook stage three and four. We have a no one escapes death to commence as well, or will Eternal even try to come around and go for the save here? Are they just happy with the four stages and just leaving? I think Eternal could take that if they find a good start into the Trapper match. It's definitely be possible to match the four stages here and then they would be good to go we do see that nightlight is lurking a little bit into rpd was worried there for a second if that is going to be enough distance to make it back towards the exit gate but the answer is yes no one escapes death hasn't been cleansed yet so i'm pretty certain that they're just going to get the stages out of the door here Mm, I, I feel like at this point it wouldn't be worth the risk at trying to go for the rescue and turn what would have been a four stage into a potential five stage if you end up one for one with a fresh hook survivor mm -hmm. as 
the only other person that, that has been hooked, I believe, would have been um, Bulbazar from earlier, if I'm not mistaken. But still, I feel like it's a risk that's not really worth taking, and Eternal is just sort of playing with Zarka's emotions a little bit here, and just confirming getting Dan out the door as well, as Dan was kind of stuck in a very awkward part of the eastern side of the map, and here he is trying to go for this other door, and Zarka does end up spotting him. Not even going to be able to make it to this pallet, though. They get the rescue, though, in the distance, and Dan is going to be going up onto the hook, awarding another fresh stage, and... I don't think we have a basement here to utilize, so it'll just have to be this hook over here, and they're taking the outs! That is... Yeah, ah. that is another additional stages coming in here. That is going to be stage 4 and 5 now, while we were talking mm. about 4 stages before. So very unfortunate here for Eternal that they got spotted there once again, and the time was really on their side, right? We had a lot of going back and forth here for Zaka. He was checking a lot of spots and the survivor certainly had some sort of a chance to make it through the RPD West Wing and making sure they are out of the door here. So very unfortunate there in the end game, even better on the other side for Elysium. They are moving closer and closer towards the grand final. And now you just need to make sure that your survivor team is on the point and doesn't get more than five hook stages on themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, let's see if Elysium beats Eternal and makes it into the grand final with a clean three Oh, that is on the table here as well, next to just qualifying for the grand final next Sunday. As Spoker pointed out earlier, Elysium hasn't dropped a single set yet. And right now it seems like they're not willed to do so. So we're going to find out how it's actually going to be played after a short break. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Is it going to be Evan seeding the deal for the grand final? Is it going to be Elysium making it all the way through for the upcoming Sunday? And is Eternal going to take an extra turn through the lower bracket? All these questions will find an answer right here on the RPD West Ring. We do see Pedro on the Kidder Corrupt Intervention. And once again, and no one escapes death together with a bitter murmur. So let's see if that aura reading and this aura information is going to help out a little bit. Forced penance after what we have seen in the previous trial, an understandable choice here as well, because Elysium, with all their coordination, they have presented us definitely likely to take a couple of hits for the team members and one of them will oh. actually be needed very soon because Zaka after disarming a trap now injured and after this pallet might be in a tricky spot. Yeah, but I definitely think Zaka is going to be able to break away to some very safe parts of the map from that even though we have some traps up. We have V1 in the area ready to take a hit if needs be which would then consequently reveal the Force Penance. But Zaka and Zeno both disarming traps very early on, even through the very obvious bloody coil that was going to be brought into the trial. Very, honestly, very, very interesting. The health states would need to be very valuable going into a game like a Trapper game. And V1 getting caught in a really awkward trap is going to be a very rough start for Elysium. Yeah, that is a wonderful, wonderful one for Pedro here. We do have so many injuries across the board as well, because unlike the previous trial, Elysium is opting to disarm all the traps and deny the setup Pedro is trying to establish on the uh, police station here. So we do need some time to get all these resets, or they are going to play the entire trial on a very risky approach, but then you better do not hand out one M1 too much here because the win condition is also not the most luxury. Yeah, we are talking about, I believe, five stages here from the previous trial. So mm -hmm. you can hand out quite some stages, but you can definitely not take too many risks and hand out stage after stage here. So interesting decision making from them. So far, it doesn't look like taking any resets and Pedro <laughs> has successfully locked up in this room. And that is interesting now because even if this anti-camp mechanic would trigger and yeah, that is going to be a little bit of a leaf here 
I mean, denying the fact that he cannot unhook himself anyway, but even if he would be allowed to in DBDL, he wouldn't even have an exit here. So that is how great uh, the setup of Petro is here. We do see him stepping into a trap another time. He seems to enjoy that second stage coming in for V1 here. And uh, we might lose the survivor very, very early on, which in that case gives me hope that Evan has quite some control on the RPD here. Yeah, this is exactly what it totally needed to try and turn the tides a bit. And I was mentioning it earlier with Dyer while we were waiting for these games that it's always going to be possible for Eternal to make this sort of comeback as the sets get more and more, I guess, complicated, we would say, with very interesting choices of killers. Kexo, though, however, getting caught out at this rather unsafe pallet, going to be giving away a tag. And with the whole Survivor team injured, I don't really think we will really be getting that much value from false penance, but how is Kexo gonna play this one here? And he gets hit through the pallet! Mm, that's a rough hit for them to take right here. Next down coming in three injured survivors as well. And you mentioned it, right? The false penance is not coming in clutch. But it's not coming in clutch because these survivors and opting to go through all these traps that are going to be disarmed and taking all these injuries, they don't have the resources to even come and help one of their team members. Every single survivor is injured right now. And even if they would go for a full reset, it takes so much time that Kexo would be in the second hook stage already, easily camped by Pedro. And then we are slowly approaching that fifth hook stage that would be needed to apply the tie condition and then very soon going for the win here. So Eternal in a great spot. Pedro has the Evan license and showing that off here on the RPD. And so far, I don't even know what to suggest here for Elysium because every single alternative they have right now is taking too long for the price of them having four generators remaining. Yeah, and V1 playing, flying very close to the sun, being somewhat in position to go for the rescue, maybe in the hopes of going for a reset afterwards, but is instead looping back around to the front, and Pedro is actually going to be cutting him off here. And I think with that trap placement, is that going to completely block him from being able to go anywhere else apart from this area? It seems like it's definitely oh. going to be the next down, and that is right in front of the hook. And taking V1 here would even allow him to camp that survivor into the win condition. So we've seen the unexpected here. Elysium dominating in the first two sets, coming out really, really strong. But an Evan is stronger than an Elysium. One more stage onto Kexo would seal the deal here, I believe. And we do need to go into that next set. Now, I I wasn't expecting this, I wasn't expecting Evan to come out this strong with a kill even on two generators remaining, so it seems like we actually go towards the clown here. I don't want to speak too early, obviously there are magical turns possible if they are going to move in right here. They do get another generator done, but to be at least realistic, it looks very, very unlikely. Mm, and Eternal fans definitely going to be very happy right now that the strongest of all killers being Mr. Evan McMillan taking the W here for Eternal for set number three, putting the scores at two to one, still in favor of Elysium, but Eternal not being out for the count just yet. Zarka taking the next chase of the trial here. Only Zarka and Zeno left to juice up and make something happen here at the end. And even faking placing some traps here, but Zaka does actually manage to break away here to this god palette and continue the chase for at least a bit longer for some style points. Well, we can only hope that the developers are not watching right now because if they would, then Evan is going to be uh, nerfed in the next update here. So for all the Evan lovers, <laughs> Let's hope that no one is seeing this insane performance by Pedro because we are getting the true, uh, the truth revealed. How strong can an Evan be? Even this pallet is not going to stop him. Zaka is going to try and anticipate the through this little crack in the lockers, and he actually manages to pull that off. Really, really impressive. Here, going back to that pallet, really, really good run for him. Now we are still 
on the five stage. So if we would oh. manage to somehow get all these stages out of the door, it would have been a magical swing, but there's going to be now the pull out of the locker, seven stages coming in, eight, nine potentially, because I don't expect Zeno to come back in and rescue his team members. So we do go for the clown on the Pale Rose. We talked about it in the campfire chat. Laser has a very, very nice moment on the shack of the Pale Rose. We all remember it, his looping. Now, <laughs> the question is, will he play Survivor Spoker? That will be the number one question of the well, evening. Uh, I think to add to that question nice and quickly, uh, Laser isn't actually on the roster for Elysium for All Hallows League, so we will not be seeing Laser on the Survivor side. <laughs> Obviously, we in need anticipation to allow to of this clan match. <laughs> we need to make an exception. It is, that's true. I forgot about it. I, w I got so hyped about having the rematch of Laser on the payrolls that I was like, he must be on that roster. But you're right. Maybe we should allow a last second switch. Well, Laser, then at least we are hoping you're watching this because you have also decided that the clown is going to be played on the pale rose. So, ladies and gentlemen, we need set number four to find a decision between Elysium and Eternal, and we are going to make that happen, and we are going to show you that outcome after a short break. G'day, everyone, and welcome back. The pantry is looking as grim as ever as we have Nightlight on the clown. Absolutely notorious for playing this character, and going to be an absolutely deadly performance, I can only imagine, as Eternal does need to fight back quite hard as their victory status is, well, on the line here with this game, so... Oh! Uh oh I reckon that could have been a hit onto Zeno if that light went for it, but... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, yeah, with the confidence of a swing there, that would have been the first M1 into the game. Unfortunately, not going for it, and therefore Zeno getting away here. I love that the first chase is between Nightlight and Zeno. It's kind of the old duel in competitive DVD. We remember Agony and Oracle, for example. So Nightlight and Zeno, the really, really oldies, we could say, with all the experience playing against each other. Zeno here with a very, very wonderful sprint burst usage, making more distance. Can't avoid the first injury coming out, though. Can delay it, however, and therefore going to have a little bit of reach to the pallet here. Was faking that he would go for the pallet, then instead going backwards and going over the window and that actually worked. Made a ton of distance here, even enough mm. to avoid this bottle. Very well played. And having the pallet spawn up at the top of the dock as well. Really, really nice. Now, I think if you time it right, there is a way to get the the, well, not the fast one, but a no stagger vault off of the top of the dock onto that window. But it's almost impossible. But it's never impossible for Zeno to be making incredible amounts of distance from these chases. Be able to take it all the way back over towards the shack. And dare I say, deeper into the corrupt as well. Nice and away from all the active generators. This is really going to be a tough start onto the momentum of Eternal if they do want to win this set. <laughs> Yeah, and that is now going to be the first down here, but Zeno once again with an amazing run. We have seen such a run earlier on the Slinger set on the Deadlock Saloon in the edge of a map. So whenever he's needed to put up a long chase for his team and kind of getting some wiggle room for them, he's definitely there. He's showing up two generators as a punishment for this first chase here onto Nightlight, and we do see it happening once again here. Any means necessary. I was thinking earlier we have seen this pallet before, and then it was back in upright position. I didn't want to call on it because of my <laughs> lack of sleep. Maybe I was <laughs> kind of hallucinating there. But yeah, it is actually any means necessary coming in here. So, And there we see once again why Elysium is shining so much in this winner bracket final, right? They have the team play. They have the coordination and they are Ooh. even working all together. One player is looping, one is putting the resources back in upright position and all of that is really, really coming together and making sense. Zeno not joking around on this pallet here, but goes oh. too early back over it, vaulting. We do see a survivor next to us. Is that going to be a flashlight save? The answer is no. Zeno is going to be onto the hook here. Second hook stage now, three generators completed. Elysium not going to let uh, Nightlight take the control here. However, if you would manage to kill Zeno soon enough, we can make something work here. 
And with Zeno being up on the second hook, obviously the objective has been chugging along nice and quickly as you would normally expect from such a long chase at the start, but Charble is starting to follow up to Zeno here as this elimination is moments away from happening. We did manage to get the pain reso out of Zeno, which is what is important when you're going for your tunnel out from the start, but I'm very curious as to what the rest of the teams are doing because we've had Zaka in the area for a lot of the time and we see some scratch marks in this smaller pantry here as that fourth generator is getting completed and the pressure is just exponentially building up for Nightlight. It's really starting to get to that point where even if we get this elimination onto Xeno by forcing yeah. it, it's what are you going to do now that all the gens are done? We do have the know it obviously in the back pocket to maybe go for a six stage. But if not, like, can't catch up to anyone here before gates get open, then this is going to be really, really tough. But I'm sure Nightlight can contest this one in time. Yeah, and this is why, and now I'm speaking to all the Twitter warlords that are going to attack us again to cry about DVD comp. This is the difficulty, right? Everyone is saying. Well, it's just about camp and tunnel, but while it's not, there's a lot of timing and strategy into it because it is certainly nice to cut down a survivor team to three people, but just as you pointed out, Spoker, it matters if you have time afterwards to make that work and if you even have a game afterwards to play against three survivors and if that's not the case, then it's kind of what happened here. Luckily, he ca uh, caught Zarka now on the main building, but kinda he was just going for the elimination and then the survivor team was already ready to go so in that case it can be far better for win condition to go for the fresh survivors just, that just as a like little note uh, before we are going to find ourselves on twitter again we do see that zaka is going to be <laughs> on the pallet here and uh, that needs to be careful because the potential pallet rescue is very likely we do see one of them down there i doubt that anyone would sit in this locker here because that risk would be a little bit too high but yeah, not the best position for night. I definitely need to be very worried here and i kind of feel like this survivor down there is working as a bait right now yeah, well, at least there's a couple of things that we can rule out here. The Sprint Burst player obviously being out of the trial, and if anyone was to be hiding in that locker for the pallet save, then we would be getting some crows on there by now for sure. So Nightlight can at least feel a little bit confident knowing that, but still seems very, well, adamant that there's someone in the area here. And there is Kexo lurking in the middle of the main building, and we know V1 just cleansed the no ed totem nightlight still swing it off the pallet so that kexo can't get that rescue and hooked sage is going to be going on to zaka here but i feel like that this could potentially be a possible rescue with the door positioning but it doesn't seem like that's the case yeah seems like we are going to walk out of the door here with kexo and we won and just announcing this preemptively and very early, we have something to check in the background because something didn't sit right with me either while we casted the game, and that was the appearance of Exhaustion's perk that were on the Survivor teams. They are not allowed against the clown, so we are going to have a quick look and a quick talk to the teams there because how this Survivor team played was definitely not as it's supposed to be. So, ladies and gentlemen, short investigation for us, and we will be back with the housekeeper. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the housekeeping short update. Sometimes it's the game not working. Sometimes it's an outside factor, like a cut internet connection. And sometimes it's our own tools that are standing a little bit into our way. I would just like to give you an update and a quick insight. So um, not asking for your understanding necessarily, but then you know how we are doing this here in DBDL. So what we are having is, uh, let's say, a staff tool that is showing us all the perks for a certain killer. And our program decided to not really work in the previous trial. So what the staff team saw was the balance for clown but the sheet actually still showed the balance for the trapper now the match officials big shout out to them um yeah big shout out to the staff team in the background handling and carrying everything they were really panicking because they realized mid a trial there are so many exhaustions perk and they are all banned well in fact they are not banned our program just told us they are banned that was 
on our technical end. So a lot of tears and a lot of sweat were dropped for no reason, luckily. But then, and we can almost say in a joking way, shout out to Elysium for bringing a repressed alliance. There was actually one band perk. It got a little bit lost in all that chaos. We apologize, obviously, for that. We hope uh, you understand it from this little bit of an insight, what was going on behind the scenes. Repressed Alliance is banned in the general balance. Now, the rules say restart as a right for the team and a minus uh, a penalty of a tier one. But whenever we are late on catching the balance offense, then the killer player gets the decision if they want to replay it or not. And Nightlight said, I don't want to replay. I want to keep the six stages I achieved. So we are not going for the replay. Obviously, Eternal cannot revert that decision later on. So we are going with the result we had. But Elysium will take the Tier 1 penalty because they still committed the offense. So they will need seven stages on their killer side to have six and a half, basically, with the penalty. Only then they win. If they would score six stages as well, then with the penalty, it would move to 5.5. So then Eternal would take the set point. I have no idea if I managed to bring it across short and in a clear way. I hope I did. These campfire chats with housekeeping are sometimes difficult to word, and I don't want to talk too long either to not keep you all bored. So in a summary, we had a technical difficulty on our end. We are asking for your understanding, and we are asking that you're all nice with us, and we thank you for all your support. Nightlight decided to not go for a restart, even though they brought Repressed Alliance. So it's one penalty, and um, then we are going to move forward. So Elysium's killer will need seven stages. Otherwise, Eternal will take the set point. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much, and we'll see you in a second. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back on the Pale Rose with the Clown of Elysium. Win condition is seven stages for Zeno. Otherwise, Eternal would manage to take the second set point and put us into a tie of 2-2. And then it would be Sadako uh, coming out strong here for the deciding factor. A little Jake has been spotted on the uh, lower ground, we could say, of the little mini shack, and that's going to be the first injury into the game. Zeno with a quick injury here, exactly what you need when you are aiming for seven stages with your clown. And hello, Pedro! Uh -oh. Yeah, no, no, no! This is a very, very bad start for Eternal. Yeah, no, that's a, such an awkward barrel to have gotten stuck on. I know I've gotten stuck on that one many times in the past, but I don't know how many times I gotta tell you, die. This is the Grim Pantry, not the Pale Rose, you silly Billy. But anyway, <laughs> first stage of the trial. Force hesitation being picked here as well by um by Zeno. Very interesting choice, and I'm really looking forward to seeing. How that's going to be coming into play and whether it's even allowed or not and so we're getting some confirmation from the producers not like this dire not like this indeed we are going to see the unhook right here and it's going to be a little now nah, who are we actually going to follow is it going to be the good old beloved tunnel out strategy that is coming through or will we see mm. some rescues being applied? Oh, we definitely yeah. see a generator coming out. The firecracker is not going to come into clutch right here. So we are going to have Dan straight back onto the hook. Pedro going to be the injured one staying there. We will see if they are opting to go for a reset this time or if they are just going for the generators here. One generator, however, in exchange for two Hook stages is not the best early game against the Clown. Yeah, no, that's not what you want at all. I want to get uh, this is Dan, sorry, being. Uh, oh, wait, hang on a minute. Sorry, I thought we had the, t the tunnel out happening. I'm fatigue getting to me a little bit, but the second fresh hook of the trial as opposed to going for a second hook stage on our previous survivor. The second generator getting completed, though, in response. The stress will slowly start building up for Xeno, for Elysium, knowing that by winning this game, it will be the guaranteed spot in the grand finals for Team Elysium, as well as being guaranteed in the money to add to the Steam profile of tournament winnings. 
And we do, so I was worried a little bit there that with the pink smoke he wouldn't make that back to the pallet. The false hesitation here from our killer being allowed, double checked in the background, so we all find on that build there's going to be now the next bottles raining down on this survivor here, but not able to follow them. So that's going to be the rotation back towards the hook. No one has taken the rescue just yet. So it might be the minus rep onto the team members there because we are looking onto a longer duration now where our survivor has been hanging on the hook. And I can only hope that they're not giving away the elimination. Yeah, no, that would not be ideal at all. And as, as, oh wait, hang on, I think Pedro might be going in for the one for one, but the purple smoke was lingering from the last bottle. The save doesn't happen! That's gonna be the elimination onto Dan? There's no way. Things falling apart, Spoker. Dan is definitely going to die right here. Pedro is going to be the next hooked survivor as well. There is no healing coming in. There is no unbreakable or any thought of second chance. So Eternal going to live with the fifth hook stage right here. And remember, we are talking about seven stages. And we are only talking about seven stages because of the penalty here. So a great position now for Zeno. Hook stage number six would be the yeah. camp onto Pedro. So any survivor afterwards would be the win. Yes, they only have one additional generated to go but it's going to be a really really difficult to challenge here for our survivor team they basically need to be perfect from now on yeah like it really gives Zeno you know, so many options from this position by either securing the elimination onto pedro right and trying to go for a chase after that or straight up just going for a fresh hook survivor because both Nightlight and Blood Bazaar have yet to been hooked in the trial. And by catching either one of them now and just forcing the elimination onto them, regardless of whether that last gen has been completed or not, would be the win for Xeno. And he manages to body block the unhook from happening. Nightlight is not going to be able to get that pull as the tag happened onto Bobo. This is problems team for Eternal right now. How are they going to play this out? This is big problems indeed. There's going to be our injured survivor, Bubozavra, who's now going over towards this jungle gym here. Has one pallet to play with, but needs to be really careful. Catches the pink smoke there as well. Will be slowed down. Doesn't catch the killer when double backing. Yeah, hello, Elysium taking over. That's going to be Bubozavra back on the hook. And that is hook stage number seven. And even with a penalty, it's coming down to six and a half for Elysium. So that is going to seal the deal. Elysium is going into the grand final upcoming Sunday on 5 p.m. Central European time. In the best of seven, we will see a couple of games tomorrow and next Saturday. The lower bracket is still playing out and we have Eternal going into the lower bracket, but they can come back every team has to be defeated twice in the all hollows league so might be a rematch next weekend elysium and eternal might be another strong team coming up there from the lower bracket but spoker elysium looking wonderful and elysium looking really really clean it's a very good day to be an elysium fan seeing this victory over team the total of all teams a lot of people are going to be really happy with that and some people not as happy as well but that's just how the game goes and it's why i really enjoyed the double illumination format of these leagues and of the all hallows league where teams at least have a second chance before being out for the count even when it comes to the winners finals here so this won't be the last time where we see team eternal and they will still have their chance to make it back up to the grand finals as you were saying but for now this is going to be a celebratory elysium win over eternal three sets to one in this best of five for the winners finals the yeah next week is the finals of the winner finals which is deciding who is the winner of the winner finals after winning the winner finals you know <laughs> that is you can summarize it as grand final but you can also describe it like i did i don't even remember what i just said ladies and gentlemen elysium also with the big advantage for next sunday because how we are handling this in all hallows league and don't worry 
It is not a double elimination tournament where the lower bracket team has to win twice. We are not going to stream a best of 14. You can all chill. You don't have to book holidays from your work. Um, it's just <laughs> going to be a best of seven. But the advantage will be that after the lower bracket team that is coming into the grand final has gotten four set points and would technically take the win of the tournament, the winner bracket team can decide one of the sets they lost and ask for a replay. And if they lose that set Ooh. again, then the lower bracket team is truly the winner of All Hollows League. And if the higher bracket team is going to win that one, well, then basically the set point is going to jump over to the higher bracket team. So one joker, basically, for the winner bracket team that has made it clean all the way through. Spoker, it was a interesting best of five, I have to say. It was one where Elysium was really shining. It was one where Eternal was really shining too. But overall, I have to say that Elysium was, for me, clearly the better team today. I hope I'm not going to hurt too many feelings. I know that Eternal is a very <laughs> strong team. Just today, I felt like Elysium is, let's say, quite... Yeah, quite much shining stronger than Eternal. How do you feel after what you've seen today? <laughs> I feel like you were very carefully thinking about your <laughs> words with what you were saying there. I think you frequent Twitter enough to have to deal with another cancellation every week. But, <laughs> but no, I, I too also do believe that at least you did play better today and the results just mm -hmm. speak for themselves. They did an insane job today. And that's not to disregard how Eternal performed as well. Obviously, teams will make mistakes. There will never be a perfect team, even when it comes to Eternal. But at the end of the day, Elysium taking the win here isn't a testament to how bad another team is. You know, it's, it's a victory for them. Absolutely. It is a victory and it is a great preparation for the next one, basically.